This episode of Pen Point starts right now. This episode of Pen Point is brought to you by Gamefly. Uh, you know, I've been um, out selling my book. My book is out. Uh, it's called um, uh, God No Signs You May Already Be an Atheist and Other Magical Tales. Um, it's out on Simon & Schuster. It's out uh, in an audio version. Uh, it's out uh, electronic version for Kindle and for iBook. And it's out in a good old um, book, book, book that's at, you know in all the bookstores. And uh, I also, uh, as of uh, right now, am a uh, best-selling author. I made some best-seller lists, uh, even though they were tallied before the book came out in pre-sale. So, it's selling okay, and uh, I'm out uh, selling it like a, like, a, like a motherfucker, and mostly spending my time explaining my particular uh, beef in this book. I mean, a lot of the book is just funny stories and goofy stories about me going, uh, you know, trying to get laid at a, uh, at a gay bathhouse and about dropping my dick in a blow dryer and stuff like that. A lot of funny stories in the book and a lot of stuff about my family and my, uh, my, my children and my wife and my, uh, my mom and my dad and my sister. There's a lot, a lot of stuff like that. A lot of sweet stuff and then a lot of stuff about fucking. But um, the intellectual idea, if there is one in the book, uh, I push pretty hard for um, uh, agnostic not being a word that's between uh, atheist and theist. That once you're agnostic, it means you don't know. So the answer to, is there a God, can be an agnostic answer, which is, I don't know. But the answer to, do you believe in God, has to be either yes or no. I believe, like the fundamentalist Christians, that belief is active. And if you don't know, then you don't actively believe. So therefore, if you are agnostic, you are also atheist. And there are two different things. An agnostic, as an answer to a theological question, is a weasel word created by Thomas Huxley, Darwin's pit bull, um, so he wouldn't have to say the word atheist and, uh, and fuck up Darwin's uh, Wedgwood China uh, fortune that he lived off from his wife. That's the way, I keep saying that shit over and over, that's the only intellectual uh, idea that's really um, in the book, plus just day-to-day -day life of how a, uh, how a godless magician lives in Las Vegas. So I make this intellectual point over and over again, and then when I'm on most of the shows, I tell stories about, you know, dropping my cock into a blow dryer, which is, uh, I think, my biggest claim to fame. You know, you, you learn to do the bullet catch on stage in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> you drop cockroaches on, you dump cockroaches on David Letterman. But then, you know, the, the real important thing about my life is I drop my cock into a blow dryer and pss, sizzle it right up. Read that in the book. Um, so I'm going on all these shows. I mean, I went to Sirius Radio. And I did this show called Unmasked, which is this long interview show that's really like one of the best interview shows I've ever been on, probably the best. And I did the Springsteen channel and told stories about uh, uh, seeing Bruce back in 1972, I think, and uh, meeting Bruce and all that, and played some of my favorite songs. And also made the point that uh, there's been some pretty anti-religious stuff in Bruce's songs, although he's never come out and called himself an atheist. I would put those words in his mouth. And I did the Trucker Channel at Sirius, which is the, uh, <laughs> which was one of the most intellectually uh, uh, rigorous interviews I did. They were very careful on freewheeling on Sirius. Wonderful interview. And they pointed out to me that all of Sirius is the Trucker Channel because truckers, four million Sirius radios, four million truckers, and they listen to um, Sirius radio all the time. So if you're on the interior decorating channel, you're still talking to truckers. But the freewheeling interview was great. And I did uh, the gay channel on Sirius and told the story of my, uh, my gay bathhouse uh, visit. And uh, it was all, and then of course Opie and Anthony, who are just so fun, and all those interviews went really great. But I've been doing interviews, selling different things for like, uh, well, you know, 20 years because I didn't do, uh, I guess, 25 years because I wouldn't do any television before I turned 30. That was just a personal rule I had that maybe I'll talk about some other time. But when I turned 30, I did Letterman and Saturday Night Live like that week, and then I've been doing a lot of television since. And every time I'm on, like politically incorrect with uh, when I was on politically incorrect or on real time or on any of these uh, 
pundit shows that I do to flog whatever, you know, whatever shit we're selling. Um, whenever it gets like someone is hostile to me and I come back at them and, you know, the show happens, the event happens. When I get home and I'm alone and I'm thinking by myself, I always think that if I had been um, uh, simply polite and kind and honest, that I would have felt better about the interview. It's very hard to do that, you know, when you're on t TV and the lights and you're jacked up and there are managers and PR people backstage and you're supposed to be out there and you're supposed to be fast, and you're supposed to be funny um, and someone uh, comes at you. And of course, they're setting this up on TV because, you know, uh, hostility is good television. You tend to come back fighting. And every time I would, every time I made a mean joke, Every time I, uh, I raised my voice even slightly, even in humor, uh, I, I feel terrible afterwards. I say, what would it be like if I just stayed really feeling what I really feel, which is very happy and pleasant and tried to be polite and kind for the whole, uh, for the whole interchange uh, on, uh, uh, on a pundit show or something? Uh, how would that feel? That seems like it would feel good. And I went on Pierce Morgan, and Pierce Morgan... Um, uh, I don't know whether it was uh, a decision that was um, uh, for ratings that he wanted to be aggressive because he made uh, Michelle Bachman uh, walk off the show a couple days later. So it wasn't certainly wasn't Christian versus atheist because Michelle Bachman is Christian and he angered her. So maybe he was trying to anger people, or maybe he really did disagree with me strongly. But he started the interview with uh, uh, pretty much saying he, he didn't like me, he didn't like my book, he didn't like what I believed. Uh, it was as, as, as aggressive and straightforward a stance as someone could take, and I did it. I stayed, uh, I stayed happy, I stayed liking him, uh, I answered his questions. If he, uh, if he wanted to change the question while I was answering, if he wanted to, I didn't, I didn't say, you know, just let me finish. I didn't say anything rude. I acted on his show the way my mom uh, uh, would have wanted me to act. I acted politely and kind and uh, did my best. I did absolutely my best to, to answer his questions and explain clearly what I felt in my heart and what I had thought. And uh, guess what? <laughs> Everything my mom and dad said was right. Because I don't know how good the show was. And I don't know how much Pierce Morgan liked it. But I liked him. I liked being on his show. And I came off the show just happy and relaxed and proud that I'd done what my mom and dad uh, would have wanted me to do. So that was, that's been the whole press slogging. I'm doing a lot of Q&As around the country. I'm, uh, I'll, uh, I mean, you know, I did uh, DC, San Francisco. I guess I'll be doing like Indianapolis and Chicago. And if I'm doing one of these book readings and stuff, come on by, ask questions because uh, uh, I, I'm really liking this. I'm really having having a uh, blast. And thanks again for the unmasked interview and Open Anthony. Just just the best. Just a lot of fun. So that's my book. God know signs you may already be an atheist and other magical tales. Simon and Schuster. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing the game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Pinpoint fans get a 15-day free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash pen.